Look, some reviews are created with only days or hours behind the wheel. And with a new generation of Mini coming off the line later this year, you might see a lot of these used Minis on the market, which calls for a long-term review. Now, I've had this car for four years, and I've generated some positive and negative feelings towards Mini and their cars, and I want to share them with you today in this review. I'm Jackson Stats. Let's get started. It's very hard to talk about the Mini without talking about its distinctive design. In the front here we have these nice bubbly looking headlights that are innocent, but they're pretty sporty looking. And up here on the hood, we have this area where there'd be a hood scoop in the higher end models like the John Cooper Works or the Cooper S to help with engine air intake. Now back in the back we have this classic sporty hot hatch look complemented very well by these exclusively beautiful Mini taillights. Now new Minis, like this 2016 model here, were designed over 20 years ago by a man named Frank Stephenson, who provided designs for Maserati, Ferrari, and many other high-end car brands. He included some nice, unique elements, like these nice hard lines that go to the back of the car that blend well with the nice bubbly headlights in the front, overall creating a really beautiful design. He brought over some old design elements from old Minis, too. He brought out the uh, wheelbase, which is at the very edges of the car, to increase the maximum room inside the car for passengers and luggage. Now you may be led to believe that this is a British-made car with all the Union Jacks and such, which it is. What you may not know is that Mini is a BMW company, and that these third-generation Minis like this one are almost entirely BMW made. This one even has a BMW engine. Now this leads to the typical high repair costs and over-engineering of German cars, but also the really positives of German cars like the really well-made interior, reliability, and just premium feel in general. Let's talk about the interior build quality of this car. Since it's a BMW, it's just as nice as you would expect. There's nice squishy plastics for your elbows, nice hard plastics up here, but the dash, a little bit more of a cheap hard plastic, but it doesn't matter because you don't drive down the road caressing your dash. Now the seats are nice and firm and they feel like they'll hold you nice and secure when you whip this thing around a corner, which you'll do quite often as we'll talk about. Now let's talk more importantly about the piano black, which is used quite extensively through the dash. It sucks. It looks great for about 20 seconds after which somebody sneezes on it or touches it or some dust falls on it. After, if you're like me, you'll clean it off with a microfiber cloth and you'll scratch it so bad that it'll look horrible for the rest of its existence. Piano black sucks. It really shouldn't be used in cars, but if you don't clean it, I guess it looks pretty good. Now let's talk space. There's not a whole lot of it back here, but there is a usable amount. I mean, I can fit a tenor sax, a backpack, some groceries, all in this one adequately sized area. In fact, the seats, they even fold down, which can triple the amount of room you have back here, say if you're going on a, a larger road trip. Now, they don't fold flat, but there is this subfloor area where I'm sitting that has quite a bit of extra space too. I've gone back and forth across the country quite a few times in this car, hauling dome furniture and all the stuff I need for college in the back here, and it is quite a usable amount of space. Now that we're on this topic of space, let's talk about the back row. There's not a lot of space back here. Now if you're not burned with having legs, uh, it's not very comfortable and it's really only reserved for about five minute, five to ten minute around town kind of trips with your friends and longer road trips it's not going to work and you'll have the bench seats folded down anyways. If you need more space, the four door option is probably good for you. They make a four door variant of this car and it's a little bit longer, there's a lot less performance, but you have a lot more space and it still maintains that go-kart feeling. So that may be your best bet if you need more space. But the seats are here, they're not particularly useful but they're here if you need to get around town of four friends. So what about the car? How does it drive? Well, you'll be pleased to know that Mini lives up to its marketing. 
Uh, it's, it's marketed as a go-kart, a go-kart-like driving feeling. And it really does deliver on the marketing. You can just put this thing right where you want in a corner. And with the 50-50 weight distribution and the really low center of gravity, this thing, this thing handles like a champ. And in fact, it doesn't feel slow either. I mean, the engine only makes 100 or so horsepower and it has an over six second zero to 60 time, which is not phenomenal. That's pretty slow, but it doesn't feel slow either. It feels like a really fast car. And we have this really notchy, beautiful transmission. It, it's notchy, it goes straight down, and it auto rev matches too, so you get a nice performance boost when you're driving. Let's talk about how loud it is in here. It's pretty loud, even with the new Grand Touring tires, there's still a fair bit of road noise that makes, it its, that makes its way into the cabin. Now the speakers, they're made by Harman Kardon, and at a standstill, they're really good. They sound fantastic. But when they have to compete with the road noise on the interstate, they're pretty mid. I mean, they don't, they don't sound the best at inter, interstate speeds when you crank the volume. But at slower speeds, they sound pretty good. Now the infotainment leaves a little bit to be desired. It's not a touch screen. You can't control this with touch. You have to control it down here with this little knob. And this little knob, it spins and it's a BMW feature. Because BMW cars also have these. And it works good about half the time. When you are doing things like entering a destination, it really does not deliver. It's pretty sad. But other times, like adjusting radio stations and that sort of thing, it's really great. So about half and half, I have mixed feelings about that. Now this little three cylinder engine is kind of funny because it requires 91 fuel, so that's a little bit of a drawback. But it makes a wonderful 39 miles to the gallon on the interstate. 39, that's crazy. But it's a shame that the seats only feel comfortable for about an hour. After an hour, they start to feel, well they make my back hurt a little bit. But in the corners, in the mountains, you get really, really nice support and feel, and they feel very sporty. Now these seats were an option. You can opt for more comfortable touring seats, uh, but these looked a lot more cool. Now this car has three modes. It's got sport, which tightens everything up a bit. So the steering's a little bit heavier, the suspension's a little bit more heavy, and the throttle response is much improved. It even makes a little whistle out of the turbo when you step on it, so it sounds really nice. Then in mid, we have the default setting. This is just how it starts and it's just the medium setting of suspension, throttle response, and the lightest steering. And the third mode is green mode, and a nice little let's minimize screen down here, and it plays games that show you how many miles you've saved by driving efficiently and all that. But it, I had mixed feelings on the green mode. It's really good for saving fuel, obviously, but it makes the car feel really sluggish. It doesn't really improve the handling very much. Now that's part, that's the idea of course, but it's not a fun car to drive anymore in green. Now I'm driving through the mountains right now, which is phenomenal. This car is the best car to have in the mountains. This is the best car I've ever driven in the mountains and it works really well. Because of its low center of gravity, you don't have to brake at all through any turns. And with the manual transmission, going down hills is really, really easy. Just throw it in the lower gear, you don't even have to touch the brakes. City also performs really well. The mirrors automatically fold in. It's nice and small, so you can fit in any spot that you want. But if you live in a city, this is a really great option too. Now since I live in Colorado, I can attest to the snow performance of this car. It's front wheel drive, so it only does mediocre in the snow. But you might be surprised, with, all, with these pretty basic all-weather tires, it drives pretty well in the snow as long as the depth is kept to a manageable level. But if you need more snow performance, Mini always makes the Mini Countryman, which is all-wheel drive, sits higher up on the ground, and is probably a better choice if you live in a snowy environment. But this car does handle pretty well in the snow. Well, is the Mini Cooper worth it? I'd say absolutely. It's been a great car, it's been super fun, and totally reliable. I'd highly recommend it. And if you're on the fence, go for a test drive. You 
definitely won't regret it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I just wanted to give a special thanks to Longmont Public Media for providing all the equipment that we used on this project. If you're around Longmont or in the Colorado area, you should check them out. They're really great and this video wouldn't have been the same without them. I also wanted to say thank you to my crew, Blaze and Henry. They did an awesome job helping me record this project and it certainly wouldn't have happened without them either. If you like this video and you want me to make more content or increase the quality of my content, you should subscribe. It takes just a second and you should also like it and share it with somebody that uh, you think may like it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.